Austru, Austru, dragă trăguță, Mi-ai cerut ciora cu panglicuță, Și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea, și-ai mai vrea matale, Să-ți cumpere neica și sandale. Good afternoon again, uh, story number 16, with life, real life stories with Rabbi Haim Asa from Burgas, Bulgaria. I'm David Liviano from Bucharest, Romania. And today's a beautiful afternoon day, as most days are in Southern California, of Thursday, May 23rd, 2013. And we are honored and uh, happy to have next to us a great human being, uh, I'm proud to be able to say he's my new friend, Rabbi Haim Asa, who's going to finish a story that was in uh, the previous uh, chapter, and then he's going to tell us a little more about the ra righteous Gentile, non-Jew, that saved his own life back in Bulgaria. But let's hear from uh, Rabbi Asa. Thank you, David. Thank you. The story of Oscar Schindler became a book bec oh let me backtrack to Leopold to, to Leopold Page. That's right. When I heard his story I was totally amazed. I never knew anything about the Schindler people. We're back in nineteen eighty four now. Right. Long na before na no, nineteen eighty six. Nineteen eighty six? Right. Quite a while before yeah, uh Spielberg. we're in Beverly Hills, yeah. I'm having coffee with Leopold. He tells me the story and I was fascinated and I asked him, how come nobody is talking about it? And he said, talking about it? I've been talking about this story to everybody. Nobody wants to hear it, believe it, or advertise it. So this is 1984, from 1944, 40 years he's been talking to everybody with uh, no success of finding someone that really has an interest of preserving yeah. these extraordinary stories. So here's Rabbi Asa. I asked him, I asked him uh, have you spoken to, to, to the rabbis in Los Angeles? After all, Los Angeles and Fullerton are 14 miles apart, whatever it is. Yeah. He says, I've tried. Nobody wants to hear it. They don't think that this is possible. I said, look. I've they don't believe, they didn't believe the accuracy of the story. I have told him, I will invite you to my own temple. Betikva in Fullerton. Betikva in Fullerton. Uh, the first open Friday, which was like two, three weeks later. In 1984. So, uh, 86. In 1986, so excuse I will me. have enough time to advertise right. the, the, the coming of a guest the speaker, the, uh, the event, and we had a crowd beyond belief, the, the place was full, A, B, somebody had invited, uh, not somebody, three couples from my temple had befriended a young Leon Layson who was the baby of the Schindler's List. I mentioned him before. So he was the youngest yeah. uh, child on Schindler's List that worked there. Fire, and this yeah. gentleman, Liam Layson, yeah. his family was there. Greg. And Greg. They invited Leon Layson to come to Temple that Friday night. I never met before. Right. I never had the pleasure of meeting Leon Layson, right. who later on became my soul friend and intimate friend. And my members introduced me to this good-looking, um, at that time he was probably um, 50 years old, teacher. Who, who is this? Leo, uh, Leon Layson, and said, by the way, the topic that Mr. Page is going to discuss tonight is the life also of Leon Layson. So they were in the same group? They were in the same group and they knew each other. Wow. Because those Schindler's Jews would meet right. periodically wherever they are. But they were kids, yeah. they were like 10 years old or something? Yeah. Well, Leon was, Leopold was uh, at least 10 years older, oh. so he was probably 20, 22 when, uh, when uh, the uh, Holocaust happened. Yeah. And Lee, uh, Liam was yeah. much younger, well, he was the youngest yeah. of the group. he was the baby. The baby well, of the when did the writer of the book okay. came, came into the picture? So, Leopold Page spoke that night and he said, this is the first time I'm invited to speak to a... An official place. Yeah, uh, to, to a public. temple, synagogue, right. about my experience and I wish that more rabbis would 
emulate Rabbi Asa, or blah, 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 and they blah, would blah, believe blah, blah. me. Yeah. Well, well, about a year later, in '87, more or less, a young uh, Australian or New Zealand. I think I, I mentioned this to uh, in. Uh, segment number five, six, or right seven. in the beginning of yeah. all stories. A young writer from Lond from uh, New Zealand flying to London, or the opposite, from London flying right. back home, needed a handbag, uh, like men, uh, men normally in this country they don't, but in Europe it's men, very common. It's common for men to yeah. carry bags. It's very yeah. European. Yeah. yeah, and he wanted to buy a bag, so Leopold. Page always makes little talk with the customers. Oh, where are you from? Oh, you're from. The so by ac accidentally, this fellow came to this store because exactly. Leopold, so no it was serendipity. serendipity. No connection. Serendipity. Nobody invited him. They didn't know. Hundred percent serendipity. Really. So when he hears, Leopold hears that this guy is a writer and he's already published a couple of books uh, on whatever. Subject. He starts telling his story. He said, "Look, I'd like to take your time." Maybe we could go for a cup of coffee, uh, and if you're not in a hurry... He repeats the like, spiel. Exactly. Repeats everything. Like a good salesman, he guy, tells the story until he finds the right person. The guy is fascinated, and he says, I would like to write the story and make make it like 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 almost like a historical novel. That's right. Uh, not just statistics. Right. Uh, Simple facts. Uh, yeah. This happened with the real meat well, on the bones, the story, what happened to the people. The, the book was published, Schindler's List, everybody can buy it today for, you know, dollar ninety-five paperback or whatever it is, or well, maybe more. <laughs> and Spielberg, Steven Spielberg from Hollywood, got into the picture, picked up, no pun intended, right, <laughs> picked up the book, Got the writers, uh, the uh, the producer rights or whatever they call it, the right. uh, movie rights. The movie rights to the yeah. book, to the author, and created an incredible Perfect. epic that everybody, everybody should see it absolutely once a year to remind ourselves what really happened seventy years but ago. But uh, here's what's even more fascinating than this group of incredible human beings, the suffering of Leopold, you being at the right place, uh, Leopold telling you the story the way he repeated to so many people for over 40 years, nobody listened. Then this fellow, the uh, great writer, comes from Australia, happens to be interested in a bag. And all these things happen. Then Spielberg, yeah. the genius uh, movie maker, steps in and understands the importance and value of this uh, story. But even more interesting, I would add, is that a couple of days ago, we went to Catella High School in exactly. Anaheim. And the amazing thing is that no matter how fascinated the youngsters and the teachers, everybody was about watching this horrible excerpts. They couldn't even allow the children, the youngsters, to watch the, the, all the horrific things. Uh, they were too explicit. The moment that Rabbi Asa was there as a witness to this uh, incredible moment, the children were m fascinated beyond any words that I can give you that they are talking to a living human being that lived in those terrible times. And it was an amazing moment with the youngsters that asked great questions and the rabbi that interacted so beautifully giving them a lesson of life. So I thought I'd mention this, that no matter how great movies are, Thank we you. have to take advantage to talk to the real people that suffered so much, wh whomever's around, or their children at this point, which are people that are middle-aged. But sorry to interrupt you. No, the opposite. Thank you for uh, adding. Let me just see what's going and on. Okay. I would like to add that with the millions of dollars that Spielberg made on the movie, he never took one single penny for himself, and he indeed established the Shoah Foundation at USC, University of Southern California, which is recording testimonies. Right, living this, like this the, one. Exactly. And Spielberg uh, decided that those millions of dollars don't belong to him as, as a profit, but rather as a contribution, contribution to help... Uh, to eternalize, right. to forever and ever 
uh, keep the records of the of the Schindler's List uh, story alive. That's a story. That's an amazing uh, story. Yeah. Again, we're finishing story number 16, and we will have to postpone to story number 17 the righteous Gentile, non-Jewish, wonderful human being from Bulgaria. I'm going to be talking about Marika, Marika, which was like Mary, but it's diminutive Marika in Bulgarian. Kolarova from Burgas, uh, Bulgaria, who was destined to save my life, although, thank God, the decree of our expul expulsion did not take place, did not but she's become still a reality. She stepped in before she, she, the decree didn't right, happen. Right, right. She was ready, and, and we had a plan, my father and her had a plan, that she's going to rescue me from being put on the trains. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rabbi Asa. Okay. So here we are. Until the next time. Until story number 17 coming up. This is David Liviano. Being honored to be next to Rabbi Asa. The honor is mine, David. Shalom. Shalom. Take care. Bye-bye. Ai mai vrea, ai mai vrea drăguță Ana, ca să te îmbrac mai cu o năframă. Să-ți cumpăr, să-ți cumpăr cercei mai Ana, dar eu n-am de unde mai cu o dară. Auzi, dragă fata, nechi dragă, aseară poni o tamiciană. Și acum nu sparale, să-ți cumpăr sandale, Buzunarele sunt goale bal Mai apoi trecuță Încă o băncuță Și băui în colo